Hi and welcome back to my channel. So I'm excited about this week's coaching video because this week I'm going to be talking about how to silence negative self-talk. Because at some point in time, we all have that negative self-talk. You know that little chatter that happens right here in the back of your head and just makes its way to the front? We're going to talk about how to silence that. So a little self-criticism is a good thing. It can be a reality check that spurs you to be a better person. But there is a vast difference between I need to work, I need to work out more, which sparks your motivation than it is it to say, I'm, I'm a jiggly blob. You see what I'm saying? Saying that you're a jiggly blob, that doesn't motivate you to do anything. That just makes you feel even more depressed about your weight. So excessive self-criticism tends to backfire because it leads us to focus on our so-called failures instead of the small ways that we could have improved. So psychologist Tamar E. Chansky, PhD, author of Freeing Yourself from Anxiety, and over the long haul, studies show self-trash talk is associated with higher stress levels and even depression. So here's some many ways that you can uh, use to, to quiet that inner uh, uh, negative self-talk that we have. Number one, put negative stuff in a box. Let me say that again. Put negative stuff in a box. When we're beating ourselves up, a tiny blunder is inflated into an epic typhoon of failure. So the next time a negative thought intrudes, take a few deep breaths and then quickly narrow it down and put your problems into the smallest box possible. Chansky says, if you think you screwed up in a meeting, instead of saying, I'm an idiot, I ruined my career. Say, man, I use poor choice of words. Visualizing that box can really help. Seeing a tiny box in your mind shows the actual size, size of your problem and helps you to feel more confident that you can take it on. So, I, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, if you mess up something, put it in that little bitty box. Because like, like the uh, author says, when you put it in a small box... Whatever it was you did, it's in this tiny little box right here. So this is where it belongs, not bringing it up out here. You see what I'm saying? Keep it in that little bitty box. Number two, try the power of possible thinking. We feel a lot of pressure to turn it all around and make it positive, Chansky says. But research has found that when you're down and out and force yourself to say positive things to yourself, you end up feeling worse. That's because our internal lie detector goes off. And she suggests a technique called possible thinking, which involves reaching for uh, neutral thoughts about the situation and naming the facts. Um, so saying, I'm a fat cow becomes, I'd like to lose 10 pounds. I know how to do it. The facts give you a lot more choices and directions that you can go in. Okay, so again, try the power of possible thinking. Don't lie to yourself, okay? Don't sit there. Now, let me just say this. If you know that you can stand to lose 100 pounds, don't sit there and lie to yourself and say, girl, I'm fine the way I am. No. Yeah, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, you are. But think about your health. Think about how much more happier you would be if you got that 100 pounds off. And so you don't want to, to lie to yourself. Number three, ask yourself if you're really so, if you're really so guilty. Let's say in a meeting you blurt out that your spanks are too tight. And you think, I've just made the biggest fool of myself. Challenge your version of the story. Did anyone really recoil in horror? Or were most of them actually tapping on their blackberries under the table? Make the choice to be kind to yourself by questioning your inner... In, mm, by questioning your initial thoughts. Which is key to slowing down their voice says Amy Johnson, Ph.D. in psychologist and life coach. So the more follow-ups you ask yourself, the more you dilute the shameful moment. So, and I know that was kind of a drastic example to give because I don't know anybody that's in a meeting blurting out that their spanks are too tight. I just, I've never seen it. Not to say it can't happen, but I've never seen it. But instead of beating yourself up over it, most of the people in that room probably weren't paying you any attention anyway. Number four, put a better spin on things. A simple... 
somonic tweet can actually change your outlook. So instead of telling yourself, I am so disorganized, I'll never get anything done, train yourself to say, I'm having a thought that I'm not going to get it done. It may sound silly, but this little change of wording gives you distance and reminds you that your low self-esteem moment is just that, a moment. Because let me put a pin right here. How many times have we all have said, Lord, I am so disorganized. Look at my desk. Look at my room. Look at my car. Whatever it is. We all do it. But don't beat yourself up over it. You just simply say, hey, look, you know what? I don't think any work is going to get done today. And, and then, now that you know what the problem is, you can set about cleaning up so that you can get some work done. So, the uh, Chansky says that she's always telling people that saying, boy, did, did I feel stupid, rather than I'm so stupid, may seem like a nuisance, but there's a significant difference. Young adds, because the former describes how you feel, not who you are. So, let's go back. So, Telling people to say, boy, did I feel stupid, is a lot much, is a lot better than saying, I am so stupid. No, you're not. You just made a, a poor choice of whatever it was. So, number five, ask, what would my best friend say? A quick way to puncture nasty self-talk is to think of someone you trust and imagine what he or she would say to you. Which is probably, oh please, was it really that bad? And now, I, and I can say, my my BFF, uh, Kathleen, who I also called my big sister, she would say that, girl, it was not that bad. You see what I'm saying? So, did you really ruin your career in the meeting? Another rule, if you wouldn't say it to your friend, don't say it to yourself. Did y'all get that? Let me say it one more time. If you wouldn't say it to your friend... Don't say it to yourself. You would never, at least we hope that you would never, call your friend a total slob for dropping tomato sauce on, on his or her shirt, right? You just wouldn't. So if you wouldn't say it to your friend, don't say it to yourself. Simple as that. Number six, give your inner circle, I'm sorry, give your inner critic a name. Preferably a silly one. It's hard to take that inner voice seriously when you call it the nag. Here comes the nag again. So, Brenny Brown, PhD, a research professor at the University of Houston uh, Graduate College of Social Work and author of The Gifts of Imperfection, calls hers the gremlin. Chansky prefers the perfectionist. Naming it something goofy adds a bit of, of levity, she says, which helps to break through the emotional hold that anxiety has on you. Over time, this short circuits the whole anxious cycle. So... Again, instead of calling yourself dumb or stupid or whatever other name you... Um, I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm trying to get comfortable here. Call yourself. Come up with a silly name. And then that way, you know what? It, it just... It, it, number one, it'll probably make you laugh. And then you can realize that whatever it is that's going on, it's not as big as you thought it was. Number seven. Give your rants a name, too. Johnson likes to call these inner um, stories... I'm sorry, called these inner herogenous stories. I love calling some tyrant the my friends are better than me story or I don't get enough done story, she says. Instead of feeling like it's some kind of valid feedback, this highlights how consistent the stories are. We have pretty much the same thoughts today that we had yesterday, which uh, should clue us into the fact that their habits, not necessarily truths. So you got to know what is a habit and what is a truth, okay? Number eight, pick up the phone. Shame only works if we keep it secret. So if I get in a car after a party and thought I should, I should, and thought I said something stupid, pick up the phone and say, okay. Okay, I'm in a total shame download spiral. Here's what happened, she laughs. At that moment, you've basically cut shame off at the knees. So find the courage to do the counterintuitive thing and tell someone what happened. Inevitably, these conversations end up in laughter. Okay? So, again, if you think that you did something wrong, child, pick up the phone. You make it funny. That way, it just takes all the awkwardness out of it. And number nine, embrace your imperfections. 
it's uh, it's an enormous feeling, not to mention a huge stress reducer, to stop holding yourself to um, to to extremely high standards, if you will. Perfectionism is so destructive, Brown says. And she's interviewed CEOs and award-winning athletes, and not once in 12 years did she hear anyone say, I achieved everything I have because I am a perfectionist. None of us are. We all try to be, but none of us are. So what she hears instead, they credit their success to a willingness to mess up and move on. Y'all, I love that. Be willing to mess up and then move on. So relax your standards just a little bit. Now, I'm not saying let them just go out the window, but relax them just a little bit. And if you give yourself the same empathy you'd show a friend, it will be so much easier to take the nag and win. Y'all, this is powerful. I love number. I love all of these, but number nine is the one that resonated the most with me. Because we do. We have to just, you know, willing to, to, uh, to, to go through the mess so that we can move on. And you don't have to be perfect. I think I shared with you all before that when I started doing my YouTube videos... It would take me sometimes 20 takes before I can get it right because I wanted to make sure my mouth moved a certain way and my eyes looked a certain way. Y'all know what I'm saying? My hair was in place and, and nothing was out of place and I didn't stumble over word and I didn't say and or but or 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 you know something like that too often and I would stop the video I had to go back and, and shoot it again now it's okay because none of us are perfect so stop thinking that you have to be and whoever told you that you had to be perfect in life number one they lied to you they set you up because you don't have to be let's do a quick recap and I promise I'll let you be so in order to silence the negative self-talk because again before I jump back into that but let me just say this we all experience negative self-talk. How many times have you talked yourself out of doing something that you really wanted to do? You said, you know what? I think I'm going to take on X, Y, Z. And then just that quick, that negative talk starts to, to creep up in your mind. And just that quick, you've talked yourself out of doing it. And it was a wonderful idea. How many times have we put great ideas on paper? And it looks good. And we say, yep, I'm going to run with this. And then that negative uh, self-talk comes in. And it just goes out the window. So I want to encourage you today, 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 not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, and certainly not next year, but today to quiet that negative self-talk. So in order to do that, number one, you want to put negative stuff in a box. Whatever that negative thing is, put it in a box. Because like I said, if you have this little bitty box right here, let me turn it this way, this little bitty negative box, that's really whatever's going on, that's all it is. Stop blowing it all out to here. Keep it in that little box. Number two, try the power of possible thinking. And the suggestion that was giving, given is instead of saying, I'm a fat cow, becomes, I'd like to do ten, lose 10 pounds and I know how to do it. There's a big difference. You see what I'm saying? Telling yourself you're a fat cow just makes you want to go get some ice cream and some cookies and go sit down in a corner somewhere. But saying, I'd like to lose 10 pounds and I know how to do it, that's going to get you motivated to do it. Number three, ask yourself if you're really so guilty. And if you do that, sometimes you'll find you're not as guilty as you thought you were. Okay? Number four, put a better spin on things. So uh, the example that was given, instead of telling yourself, I'm so disorganized, I'll never get anything done, train yourself to say, I'm having a thought that I am not going to get much done today. So much better. Number five, ask yourself, what would my best friend say? And like I said, this has to be somebody that you truly value as a friend and you truly um value what they have to say and how they react to things think about what they would say and then you do what they would do not the negative thing that you were going to do number six give your inner critic a name you can call it a nag you can call it a, the north wind you can call it um a grizzly bear whatever you want to call it give it a name and so, and, and make it something that makes you laugh so that when you say it, honey, by the time you, you finish falling out laughing, you didn't forget all about whatever that negative, negative thing was. Number seven, give your rants a name as well. And number eight, pick up the phone. Number nine, embrace your imperfections. Love it. I can't stress this enough. Mm, I can't stress this enough. 
it's just so important that you embrace your your imperfections because we all have them. Honey, you'll spend the rest of your life beating yourself up over the head, worrying about your imperfections. We all have it, and we just move on, and, and we do better next time. You know, you, that, that's really all you can do. So that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for my newest subscribers. Thank you so much for those of you that continue to support me. I love you guys to the moon and back. And until we talk again, I want you to really practice silencing that negative self-talk. And, and also, I'll tell you what else you could do. Whenever that negative self-talk starts to, to creep up in your mind, why don't you take a dollar and put it in a jar? And at the end of the week... See how much money you have in that jar. And this is every time, not just once a day, but every time that negative self-talk creeps up in your mind, put a dollar in a jar. And I promise you, by the end of the week, you're going to say, good Lord, I got $40 in here. And, and that tells you, you need to work on that. Okay? So, until next week, I love you guys to the moon and back. Stay the awesome people that you are, and we'll talk again soon.